Jacqueline? Nope. So, forgive all the... I've been doing some weeding just down there. Uh, but this is the treasure trove. So this year it's on these stilts outside the bedroom window. And the whole plant is pretty enormous. It is suffering from something. Um, I don't know if you can... At first we thought it was just the wind because we had some terrible... Let's see if I can find a leaf there. Can you see? We had some terrible um, wind and rain just as the leaves were coming out. So we kind of thought, oh, it's that. But I think actually it does have something. But we're not willing to spray it with Jay's fluid or anything like that to get rid of it. I'd rather just let it let it bloom and see how it goes. And if there's a problem, we might have to cut it back, which I really don't want to do because it's so, it's so amazing. Like when you walk under it, I don't know, it feels a bit fancy. They, you see now last year, their blooms were also coming down through here and they're not this year. So I definitely think it's not. Like all of this bit here, like all these branches are just bare and it wasn't like that. Now I don't know whether that's because it's grown up again. So they, they haven't bloomed anyway. Oh God, I'm not going to show you that part of the house. It's so messy. You can't see that part. That's the part we don't show anyone. Um, there's the compost heaps. I don't know if that's why it's blooming the way it is, but there's definitely not as many this year. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And in the hedge, we have a wild rose. I don't even hear the sparrows fighting. There they are, look, can you see the sparrows? Anywho, here we go. I don't know if I've caught the Akim on video. But there it is. And we've actually, if you can see any buzzing around it, it is actually bees. We have actually had people stop and stare at it from the road now. Is it any wonder? It's the height of our house. <laughs> and then the delphiniums down there have obviously thought, well, anything you can do. Because that one is up in the arch, which is insanity. Anywho. There we go. I'm not, I don't want to be underneath it when it falls because it's certainly got a bit of a tilt to it now. Hi, I'm Charlotte and this is Bookish Mama Blooms. Welcome to part two of my kind of bookish update from April, May and then part of June. These are the books that I'm part way through. Some of these go all the way back to 2020. I kind of want your feedback on them. I want to know, have you read them? Should I carry on? What do you do when you get to this point where you've got so many half-read books? Do you just ditch them? Because I have done that before. I've just like shipped them all off and just pretended they didn't exist. Even the ones I think that I was actually enjoying, it's gotten to the point where they've become too much. So let me know. Here we go. Around the World in 80 Trees by Jonathan Drury. Now I had this, I'm pretty sure I got this in 2019. This is gorgeously illustrated. If you don't, if you haven't seen it, it's just these amazing illustrations and then descriptions of all different types of tree across the world. Um, I am, I don't even know 100% where I am. Not very far. What do I do? Do I just put it on the shelf and wait for another time or do I try and find my place? Um, I haven't finished To Kill a Mockingbird. This is, that's ridiculous. I think I will have to finish this. So I've got about 30 pages. No, maybe a bit more. 50 pages left. I just came to a halt and picked up something else. And because I've read it before, I know how it ends. I almost don't want that sadness. So I think that's why that's come to a halt. This one, um, A Still Life by Josie George, a memoir. Is This is about um, having a chronic illness and how you live your life when you've got a chronic illness and you're not able to basically move from your house a lot of the time. I loved what I've read of this. I've read about a third. Sorry, my... Everywhere in the house is covered in either my hair or the dog's hair. Um, I've read about a third, I loved it, but then I just went through a really hard time. And I think sometimes when you're reading about something, obviously I don't have a chronic illness, but I can relate to being in bed for several days at a time with various things. It just didn't fit at the time, I found it too difficult. So what do I do? It's been, I don't even know how long, eight months? What do I do? Um, this amazing book, Neil Price, The Children of Ash and Elm, A History of the Vikings, was definitely heading for my top 10 of 2021. But I read a really horrific chapter on their 
burial rites, which kind of described in vivid detail just a mass amount of rape and slaughter of animals. And I just feel I just can't quite catch my breath after that. So I am over halfway. It is incredibly well written. It is so interesting. It covers things like gender with Vikings, just super out there, just my type of thing. But I've stalled. Let me know if you've read it. Um, Sean, forgive me. God, this is covered in uh, dust. This is love and rage. You know, this is part of our, the book club that Sean runs. The Path of Liberation Through Anger, Lama Rod Owens. I know it's excellent. Um, despite the fact that that's there, I'm actually here. So again, two thirds of the way through. I just, I was reading too many books at the same time. So that's what happened with this one. I need to find my flow again. And then uh, Skoma Island, Mike Alexander. I am just over halfway. It's amazing. It's got loads of illustrations, so it's not a, a difficult read, even though it is a bit of a, of a door stopper. Um, I stopped this because I was going to Skoma on the day, you know, the day after I got to this point, and I was like, I'll finish it at home, but I just lost the motivation. I am headed back to Skoma unbelievably um, at the end of this month because my sister's coming down and we've decided to go my sister is like a huge uh, bird fan she's she used to be a falconer she's got two owls in her house because of the fact that when this uh, sort of animal park that she was working in closed a lot of the staff ended up taking the animals that had bonded to them so you know we're gonna have a great time do I need to finish reading this before then partly so that I can know a little bit about the birds we're looking at when she's trying to be a know-all. Okay, and then the other one is The Art of Feminism, Images That Shape the Fight for Equality. Um, this is, oh, that's an interesting one to have turned on. This is a beautifully illustrated book. Um, so far, now, I can't quite remember why I wasn't impressed. Um, I got, oh gosh, I can't even remember, maybe halfway through. I think the reason I wasn't impressed because I didn't feel it was very inclusive, but I'll have to go back and remind myself. <laughs> Um, and also it was just a little bit boring, which I was a bit shocked about. The book itself looks beautiful though. Do I persevere? It did cost me almost 30 pounds. I went quietly because Stephen's in the kitchen. 30 pounds for me to then decide I'm not gonna finish it. That's a bit ridiculous. So there you go. They're all around me. It doesn't help that I've got three buddy reads on the go right now. Yeah. So maybe when I finish the buddy read, should I just say to everybody, that's it, I'm done. No more buddy reads. Not that everyone's clamoring at my door, but you know what I mean. And try and finish these before the year is out. Let me know what you think. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.